Update. Am I the a-hole for insisting on a paternity test before accepting my ex-wife's son as my own? Original post. I, 32 male, was married to my ex-wife, 30 female, for five years. Our marriage ended after I discovered she had been cheating on me for about a year with multiple men. She got pregnant and confessed that she doesn't know if the baby was mine or our fair partners. A couple of months after the divorce, I tried to reach out to her to see if the baby was mine but couldn't, and I learned through a friend she and her new partner had left the country. That was two years ago, and I thought that was that. Recently, Jane reached out to my mother claiming that her kid is mine and in need of financial help. Jane told my mother that her partner left her when he found out the kid is not his. Now, for context, my mother has been desperate for grandkids, especially since my older brother is gay and child-free and I've been single since the divorce. She's been relentless in pressuring me to help out Jane. However, I have my doubts given her infidelity. I find it hard to trust her claims without concrete evidence. So, I've insisted on a paternity test before committing to any financial or emotional support. If the child is indeed mine, I'd gladly step up and fulfill my responsibilities as a father. But I refuse to do so without proper legal documentation. My mother and Jane are both vehemently against the idea of involving lawyers or going through the legal process. They insist that the child is mine, based on similar resemblances, like having blue eyes, which I have, but Jane has blue eyes as well. This issue came to a head when my mother posted a picture on Facebook of her and a kid titled, My Grandson. Now, family members and some friends know about this issue and are contacting me. When I tell them I don't know if the kid is mine and want to do a paternity test, they are calling me selfish and irresponsible. My family members are saying my mother will only say that because she is sure that the kid is mine. My friends says I'm an a-hole for punishing the kid for what my ex-wife did. There is a chance the kid is mine, but I can't shake off my doubts, and I refuse to be manipulated into a situation where I might end up responsible for a child who may not be mine. I'm willing to do what's right, but I need certainty first. But it's driving me crazy, with so many people close to me saying I should just take responsibility. My older brother is the only one who is on my side, and he thinks it's because my mother has accepted a kid that others are willing to accept it too, and because of family bonds which are a major thing here. But I'm standing firm in my decision to do a paternity test. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole. DNA test or nothing? It's crazy to think you just step in and take over a parental role based on your lying ex's claim. Especially the fact that OP's ex-wife is only reaching out because she needed financial support. Definitely not the a-hole. Continue to stand firm with your decision, OP. Don't be played for a fool. Yep, you'd be an idiot not to test the DNA of your cheating ex's kid. That she suddenly says is yours two years later when having money trouble. Don't believe a word she says until it's proven. Also, your mother is the a-hole here for posting that before you have proof and already. Even if the kid is yours, that is not right for her to do. And you need to find a way to make that clear to her. That is not her place at all. She likely already did a paternity test once, which is how the affair partner found out the kid isn't his. She can do another one. It's also very possible the kid is the affair partner's and they just broke up because she cheated on him too. Or whatever the reason. Maybe he's paying child support already. Or maybe it's not affair partner's, but she was also sleeping with five other guys at the time of conception. This whole story is just from what a cheater told him. Maybe she saw that your mother was going to push you and figured she'd have an easy shot at doubling down in child support, as long as no lawyers or paternity tests are involved. Opie definitely needs lawyers to work out paternity, work out a child support agreement, and work out custody and visitation rights. If Opie just blindly starts sending money for a kid he is not legally the father of, he has no rights to visitation or how the child is raised. Maybe it is Opie since she wants the money with none of the rights that come with being a father. There is a million reasons why she may not want lawyers involved and absolutely no reason why Opie should be lawyered up already. If Opie is willing to pay the cost of the paternity test himself, why would she have a problem with that if he's really the father? Not the a-hole. This is obvious. You should also reply in your mother's Facebook post stating that your ex-wife had a baby after adultery and after leaving you, and that until such a time as a paternity test is agreed to, the child is not known to be your son or your mother's grandson and that you have reasons to doubt that you could be the father due to timing and a refusal to confirm it by testing. This is the way. If your mother wants to feed her delusions publicly and there is fallout, then present the brutal facts. Maybe, Mom, as you know, X was cheating on me with multiple people at the time of conception. You are also aware she left the country with the alleged father. She has returned making this claim after he has left her. 
until there is a paternity test definitely proving the child is mine and not one of her affair partners, you still remain grandchildless. Not the a-hole. Your mother is blinded by her obsession to have grandkids. You are not being selfish. You are being responsible. Protect yourself and get the test done. Sad so many older women become so terrible in the quest for grandkids. It's really pathetic and tells me they never try to work on themselves. It only see themselves as caretakers. And then I keep hearing stories about how once the grandkids arrive, they just want to take a couple pictures with them and otherwise ignore them and not help. Now for the update. So a lot of stuff has happened and I'm exhausted with dealing with this issue. Despite trying to talk reason to my mother, I got nowhere. My brother and I managed to talk to our aunt who is on my side after she learned what has happened. She was able to convince mother to talk to me and we agreed to meet at her house. However, it quickly devolved into arguing, with my mother still insisting the baby is mine and accusing both me and my brother of betraying her for not giving her grandkids. My brother finally snapped and asked her if she was willing to lose two sons over this. That made her go quiet. With my aunt's help, we convinced her to talk to Jane for the paternity test. A couple hours after I left, aunt called me and asked me to arrange the test. According to my aunt, it took some arguing between mom and Jane to get her to agree to the test, but Jane eventually agreed. So, I scheduled a test at a clinic, and the earliest appointment I could get was three days from that day. I relayed all of this to my mother and aunt and got the okay from them. The day before the test, my brother and I got a call from our aunt and she asked us to come to our mother's house ASAP. When we got there, we saw our mother sitting on a sofa crying. I asked what happened and she said Jane is gone. Now, I knew Jane was back in the country and was visiting my mother every day, but I did not know it was my mother who facilitated everything. My mother revealed that after Jane contacted her, she flew Jane and the baby out and put her in an apartment near her house and had been paying rent for her, buying her and the baby things for a month and a half before they told me. I lived just an hour from my mother, and I talked to her on the phone four or five times a week, and she never told me. After Jane agreed to the test, she asked for money, and she told my mother that after the test confirms that I'm the father, she needs to buy some essential home stuff as she intends to stay near here. My mother gave her an amount close to 8k US dollars. After she got the money, she did not come and see my mother, so my mother went to the apartment and saw that it was empty. I asked why did she ever trust someone who has lied so much before, and she said all her friends are grandmothers, and they are always with her grandkids, and she feels left out when she is with them. Then she gets up and says all of this is my fault. She comes up to me and slapped me, and just went crazy yelling and crying and kept hitting me. My aunt and brother managed to get her off me. She kept saying I was a horrible son. I should have just accepted the baby. She then turned to my brother and started yelling at him too, accusing him for instilling his child-free life on me and told him that he was an embarrassment to her. Then she started off ranting saying Jane was right to cheat on me. That if I had agreed to start a family with Jane back then, this would not have happened. For context, Jane wanted to try for a baby the second year into our marriage, but I had to keep that on hold as I made a major career change and Jane and I both agreed to wait until I was financially secure. I also want to point out, this was not the reason she gave me for infidelity. My aunt managed to calm my mother down and somewhat diffuse the situation and ask us to leave. She said she will try to reason with her. I've tried to call my mother the next day, but she's blocked me in everything. My brother and I agree she needs therapy, but she's not willing to listen or talk to us. As for Jane, I am furious at her and wanted to find her. I asked my friends to help and told them what happened. They are idiots, but they apologized to me and stepped up and supported me these past few days. I tried contacting different people through friends and their mutual friends until one of them put me in contact with Claire, who was one of Jane's bridesmaids at our wedding. I told her what happened and she was shocked at learning about it. According to Claire, Jane is back in the country of her partner and a couple of days ago, Jane called her and a few others asking for money, as she and her partner are going through some financial issues. Claire says she doesn't know if Jane and her partner are separated. Jane had never told her anything of that sort. She said when she talked with Jane, she only said they were struggling. I told Claire what Jane did and that Jane is insisting that her son is mine. Claire said that Jane told her that a kid is her current partner's two years back. Then she said she needs to talk to Jane and her partner to see what's going on. Claire kept saying she truly does not know what's going on, but she is going to ask around. That was six days ago and I tried to call Claire but she won't answer me now. I'm not going to pursue this anymore. I have my answers. So that's the update. Not the conclusion I wanted, but I don't care anymore. My mother still hasn't talked to me or my brother as of right now. I asked my aunt to let my mother know that if she refuses to talk to us or get help, then me and my brother will go permanently no contact as well. 
Family still says I'm in the wrong, as it's my fault for not being married or have kids. I told them to get lost and never contact me. My brother and I only tolerated them for my mother anyway. And I firmly believe that the baby is not mine. Your mom is an idiot, and it's her fault she was scammed. She's also a terrible person to you and your brother. Why are you letting her in your life? It's obvious the baby isn't his. She'd have done a DNA test if it was. She probably has one that shows her partner's dad. I don't know why you'd even consider ever speaking to your mother again, and she deserves to have lost all that money doing all that crap behind your back. She needs an impatient stay, or you'll end up bailing her out of jail. I can't believe she hit you. Exactly. Jane is just interested in money. If you had remarried and had a kid, your mother would have never fell for Jane's trap. That's what your family's trying to say, and that's just messed up in so many ways. Sorry you had to go through this. Jane was only here for the money or trying to drop the kid somewhere. That's the fact. And say you dodged a bullet there. Sounds like Jane would have been a nightmare to attempt a co-parenting relationship with. It's too bad your mom doesn't see that. I hope she finds help and realizes she now has no grandchildren and has lost two sons. And good on your brother for having your back. It's not that she doesn't see. She doesn't care. She doesn't care how much pain she puts her children through as long as she gets a grandchild to use as a pet. This isn't fair. All your friends have a pet grandchild. Those ungrateful sons. Your mom and Jane both sound crazy town banana pants. Good riddance to both of them. Exactly. If my mother assaulted me like this, I would not be calling her. Last story. Am I the a-hole for being upset after a wife went on a trip with a male co-worker? My wife and I have been married for six years and relatively happy all things considered. I work in sales and I'm on the road a lot. She works as a teacher's assistant at an elementary school. The teacher she works for is male. A couple months ago, my wife, the teacher she works with and two workers, bought tickets for a concert out of town at the beach. The plan was for them to stay overnight and come home the next morning. I had to travel for work, otherwise I likely would have joined. The day of the trip, two of her co-workers, females, come down sick and can't go. On a short notice, no refunds were available for the hotel or the concert tickets. It felt all for my wife to go alone with her male co-worker, but long story short, they ended up going. Multiple rooms were booked, so I felt somewhat okay and trusted her. I was less comfortable with a male co-worker. He's basically her boss, as she's the teacher assistant in his classroom. Nothing specific, other than I've caught him staring a little too long at my wife's chest a few times. She has 36 double Ds, so guys do stare, I suppose. Also, he competes in crossfit on his side and is in tremendous shape. At times, he seems too friendly, borderline flirty with my wife. So the night of the concert, I'm alone in a hotel room on the road, and my thoughts get the better of me. I turned on the find my phone and noticed that my wife's phone is not at a concert venue, but rather at the hotel. I checked sporadically throughout the evening and her phone never moved when she should have been at a concert. She also never returned my call slash text that night. I finally heard from her the next day at lunchtime when she texted to say she was heading home. She was originally planning to go back home first thing in the morning, but she said they decided to go spend some time on the beach. I had been checking her phone again that morning and again it never left the hotel. When I got home that evening, I confronted her about the phone location. She exploded in anger and asked why I was spying on her. In the end, she said she forgot it at the hotel when they went to the concert and left it in the room the next morning because she didn't want to lose it slash drop it at the beach. The whole thing felt off. Am I the a-hole or am I justified in being suspicious here? Now for the top comments. Once, I can see. Twice in a row is iffy. Not the a-hole. She's married and should not be putting herself in compromising situations. The co-workers probably were never even going in the first place. And it's unlikely that your wife and her boss got separate rooms. He's staring at your wife's t- in front of you. Exactly. I'm a married dude. I've got a few close female friends. I would never put myself in a situation like this. At best, she's lying to you. You know your wife. You know the truth. Don't wait to prove what you know. Not the a-hole. Most concert tickets are digital nowadays. Were hers not? The idea of her being in a new town with a co-worker and not having her phone on her is at best irresponsible. Did she pack the right things to go to the beach? If it was a last-minute plan, she would have been ill-prepared for a beach day. Too many coincidences here. I had no idea what she packed, since I was out of town myself. Doing laundry the next week, I noticed a lazy red thong I never remembered seeing before but didn't say anything. Easily could just be something I never noticed before, so I didn't bring it up. Yeah, sorry, I think you have a problem here. 
Do you believe in coincidences? She just so happens to be on a trip along with another man. She just so happens to forget her phone in her hotel room. And now you find this red thong? You are being cuckolded, my guy. Can you check the truth about the other two being sick and not being able to go? Also, can you confirm how many rooms were booked? And lastly, can you confirm the purchase of the tickets and if they were electronic? It sounds like she hasn't been truthful. Final point is, why didn't she contact you when she got back to her phone, either after the concert or in the morning? So, hotel with a guy, doesn't answer her phone, phone location doesn't move, and a red thong. She's for the streets. Not the a-hole. I'd be suspicious too. Unfortunately, you played your hand too soon. So if she's having an affair, she's going to be extra vigilant now. I think the best move here is to keep a mental note of everything and sweep it under the rug. As in, pretend you forgot about it or whatever. This may embolden her to do something dumb like what she just did. But she has given you a reason to doubt her. The thong is also very sus. I really hope she's not having an affair and that this is a giant misunderstanding. No matter what happens, you gotta look out and take care of yourself. Don't forget that. I appreciate your comment. Thank you. Her exploding at you is not a good sign. Me thinks she doth protest too much and all that.